administration of the vaccine till doing the uh, animal animal testing, animal toxicology, preclinical, then bringing it to chemicals. So, uh, but it is something which uh, we have to look forward, for used, and that challenge was overcome because uh, there was no physical contact and a lot of things were running over the online. Welcome to Pharma Now. Uh, we, are, we are going through your profile, I think. You really have an amazing journey. Perhaps something As a clinical scientist, I really wanted to deep dive into your journey. How you started, how you ended up being a clinical scientist. How has how your journey started from your graduation? Which was school in pain? Just wanted to understand. So, uh, I am a, basically a pharmacy graduate. And during my graduation days, I never thought that I would enter into a field of clinical research or research and development. Uh, post my graduation, I was uh, looking to go abroad to do for my higher education and somebody suggested me to go to Germany, where there's a lot of life sciences, uh, uh, you know, research happening. And so that's where I went and did my master's and I did my PhD. And in the, during my PhD days is where, you know, I started working in clinical trials. I, I closely worked on cholesterol uh, drugs, you know, and uh, how they people respond and non-respond to them and sort of uh, thing called pharmacogenetics where you measure uh, the responsiveness of particular drug and correlink it to, to the genetic uh, constitution of certain transporters. So that's my first instance when I started working on clinical trials. I got interested in it because it is, it is a very uh, important step during the drug development process. Then I continued my journey and it's almost close to 25 years I've been working in clinical trials. Uh, doing the first in human to phase twos, phase threes, and tell the post marketing uh, studies. Um, so, post my uh, uh, stand in Germany, I moved back to India. I was working with Ranbaxi as a senior scientist uh, in their uh, medical affairs clinical research group. Uh, I worked there for a couple of years in Ranbaxi, uh, did a lot of clinical trials for Indian submissions. Then I moved on to a company called Allergan, which is based out of Bangalore. And I worked on the Euro Neuro uh, uh, drugs, uh, and uh, I this, this, the studies are mainly uh, done for USFDA submissions. And uh, later on, I was uh, heading the entire development center for Alag in Bangalore. Uh, then from there, I moved to a company uh, in called Novartis, which is here in Hyderabad, uh, as a clinical trial head, uh, and I was uh, working on very important uh, uh, drug uh, for uh, arthritis arthritis and bank closing spot gliders and I uh, I ran two uh, large global trials uh, sitting here from Hyderabad and managing teams across the globe. And from Novartis I moved to a company called Clinigene. I was working in Clinigene as the, uh, the head and uh, managing all operations of Clinigene which was eventually merged into Syngene and became Syngene Clinical Development. Post that, you know, I had a very short stint in uh, Equia, quintiles, performing quintiles. And then for the past seven years, I'm working in biologically uh, developing vaccines, working on vaccines, and this has been my journey for the last seven years. Wow. So I think uh, you are mentioning about vaccine. I'm very curious about, uh, I heard you were one of the contributors during the vaccine uh, vaccine creation of uh, COVID. Yeah. COVID time. Yeah. Yeah. So you wanted to understand, like, what see, was that time like? Yeah, see, uh, the entire COVID time for for everyone, you know, personally, professionally, it was it was uh, it was changing, life changing, you know, what a challenging, changing, you know, we had to balance our personal life with the per, you know with, with, with our of, office uh, responsibilities, and being in the vaccine world, and you know, trying to working on developing a vaccine uh, for COVID was very challenging. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing a clinical trial, it's not, we can't sit inside and do a clinical trial. We have to venture out, we have to go to the sites, we have to work with hospitals and all this thing. So it was a very challenging time uh, during the lockdown and during, during the entire uh, period of the, uh, the, the waves, the first wave, second wave, and subsequently the Omicron wave. 
it was very challenging. Uh, first thing is to convince people to come and participate while during lockdowns and doing uh, managing all the logistics. And then uh, the problem with uh, COVID uh, virus and uh, developing vaccine for COVID virus was because it was, it's the first time nobody had no idea what is happening. You know, it is you know the treatments uh, coming every day, new new treatments or you know refashioned or re re reworked, refabricated treatments. But for vaccines, we, we didn't have any uh, guidelines to say you know this is what you have to do and this is where it takes to you have a successful vaccine. So we had to collaborate with a lot of uh, uh, external agencies, a lot of a lot of scientific advisors to help us. But it was a very challenging time, and you know and uh, thankfully the Indian uh, regulators and Indian government also helped us very well. Uh, with uh, with uh, helping us uh, on timely approvals and uh, facilitating us uh, and uh, guiding us to with the approval processes very well. But then, what was the overall experience like? Uh, I know it's it's a bit a challenge. Yeah. Uh, you you are not allowed to move. And you yeah. Know, Actually, you want to do the trials. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. It is. It is very challenging because uh, first thing when I can come back to the uh, movement space, you know, a lot of times we have to do work remotely. Uh, so we we couldn't go to the clinical trial sites or the hospitals where the clinical trials are on a regular basis to get the data. So we we use a lot of digital technology there, digital like you know, trying to get the information. And uh, we and that it was very very widely used, and that challenge was overcome because uh, there was no physical contact, and a lot of things were running over the online, uh, on web meetings, and you know a lot of things. Even uh, our interactions with the uh, the doctors or the people conducting clinical trials or the re regulators who are looking at our data, giving approvals to our clinical studies or our products. It was all done very remotely. It was very challenging because we were never used to that uh, thing, you know. Because, for example, IT companies or you know, a lot of multinational pharma companies have that infrastructure wherein you know they have these possibilities of working from home and you know this this kind of things, which was not uh, there for us. And we had to really uh, invent new ways to work, work with the sites, work with our uh, external collaborators, and also within within our you know and. Uh, Certain times, certain amount of times is risky also because although we uh, uh, there was lockdown, but we had special permissions to travel. Yes. Our employees had special permissions to travel. So my team did an excellent job of you know uh, risking you know because during second wave, I remember you know that to that to travel across India uh, to get uh, you know the things on time you know uh, maybe results or maybe maybe the the uh, the material everything they worked uh, day in and day hard and you know so that this is on time uh, availability of data so it is very difficult very challenging and if uh, we, you know if i think it's it was very nightmarish to relive the all the things but i think all all of my team you know all all of a team you know who we worked uh, for this uh, uh, vaccine we were driven with the sense of purpose that you know we are doing something good for you know the public health and how people uh, by the time you know there are other vaccines which are coming up and you know uh, uh, and uh, we are also wanted to be one of those vaccines and uh, uh, it uh, thank god you know everything went on well and we had an excellent vaccine with a great safety profile and we were able to uh, vaccinate close to around 8 crore uh, kids you know because our, our all the vaccine is approved from 5 years to uh, above age uh, the government used the vaccines uh, for uh, kids between 12 to 14 years or 15 years. You know, so around almost 8 crore people have received the COVID vaccine and you know, it was, it was, and then we also uh, did a couple of other studies uh, as uh, doing as a booster uh, dose for people who have already received the vaccine, COVID vaccines. So it was pretty challenging right there. I just can't summarize in such a short time, but it was very challenging. At the end of the COVID now, yeah. what is the sense of satisfaction? How, it, it, see, I think that there will be a lot of, lot of questions on vaccines when it comes, you know, did vaccines really work, you know, then when, when people talk about the safety issues arising over the vaccines. But I think literally, uh, at least because I'm, because I'm uh, maybe I'm, people might feel I'm biased because I'm from vaccine industry. I'm, I'm saying like this, but literally vaccine uh, saved uh, the COVID uh, pandemic, you know, people from the COVID pandemic. Uh, if not for vaccines, uh, it would have been much more difficult. You know, the way it was controlled, okay, there were a lot of lockdowns and, you know, the, 
other public safety measures helped, but def definitely vaccines are a major role to play a part in eradic eradication of the pandemic. Yeah. Coming back to the clinical development side, yeah. so the, I think after COVID, AI has got into it. Yeah. They, they had worried. Yeah. But a lot of things are changing in clinical development. Yeah. Yeah. So what are those innovations yeah. uh, you can pursue? Or what? But see, the adaption of AI in clinical trials is coming up right now. I think in, in a lot of multinational companies are working on that. They're doing their, uh, they're doing their pilot runs that sometimes you're doing in the, in the real world also doing. Uh, but it is something which uh, we have to look forward for. You know, it is going to change, it is going to impact every one of us. Like how AI is impacting in other parts of life, it would impact in clinical trials. Uh, like, you know, for example, you, with the use of artificial intelligence, we can uh, try to find out where our patients are for the clinical trials. Uh, we can search through the databases to find out where the patients are, who will be uh, eligible to participate in clinical trials. And you can develop such an, uh, digital technologies uh, to, uh, uh, for example, you know, recently, you know, I was talking in one of the conferences, one of my colleague uh, was talking about wearable device. Uh, like it is like a watch or something which would be consistently monitoring and taking the data and relaying back to the, uh, the, 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 the clinical data which is required for the thing. They're, they're doing a lot of, uh, uh, otherwise the earlier days the clinical trial participant or the volunteer should uh, fill in that data in some paper or a diary and then that used to be get transmitted. There would be a lot of transcription errors, lot of, a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, errors which would not be useful for the data, would not be useful. But with this real-time monitoring, real-time collection of data with these wearable devices, and then there is a lot of uh, analytics coming in the signal detection uh, for uh, safety, uh, where is where an artificial intelligence is used to see the how, how the product is uh, uh, safety is monitored. Yeah, certainly. So, what do you think? What is going to be the future of medicine other than AI? What all things you are expecting that okay, the things will change? Uh, see, I think clinical development is an essential part of uh, the uh, the roadmap of a or, or a road a roadmap for a drug to develop in the drug development process because it's the last step before it gets to an approval. Because it's the first time when the drug is given to uh, humans and then subsequently the safety, the efficacy is measured in in smaller subsets, then in larger subsets, then in the much more larger population. So I think. Uh, the, the process will be the same, but digitalization coming into this aspect would shorten a lot of timelines. Yeah. Uh, use of digital technology for everything, it might be in at any phase of trial or after the trial. Uh, for example, you know, there is a lot of review needs to be done, you know, and there's, there's sometimes done manually. But if you write algorithm of AI and it is, it is reduced, the, the, the timelines for you to do a clinical trial and bring to product to market decreases. So that, that, that is going to come very, you know, that is going to become very soon to how we do the clinical trials in the future. Amazing. Good question here. Now, the world has become a one individual, right? There is a lot of collaborations globally. What is in the case of clinical development? Yeah. The global collaborations are happening. Yeah. See, I think uh, that, that happened very well. Uh, like, uh, that is always that is always a global thing, clinical trial. Although it is, it again, there's a lot of privacy of data. And second thing is that a lot of intellectual property is also uh, some things to be considered. So you can't share everything. But uh, during COVID, I think it is very uh, interesting that all the companies publish their protocols. All the companies publish their data. Uh, so that everyone had access to the data of what others are doing, what's the safety of things. Uh, so that is a very, very uh, changing uh, thing which I saw during that thing. Like earlier, the, if there is a, is a phase three pivotal protocol, uh, it, is, it is very secret, it's very confidential. Now that is available that during the COVID times for all the COVID vaccines, it was available online. All the major companies, multinational companies shared the knowledge, uh, shared their safety data with each other to uh, you know, do that. And that that, that is it. And coming back to what what we do, there's a lot of uh, cooperation within uh, our partners. You know, because we in India, we we are working with other other partners who are located in other Europe, uh, US. So we work with them a lot, collaborate with them. Uh, we jointly develop certain vaccines with them. You know, so that is that is happening. So 
a lot of companies are cross collaborating within uh, within their companies to develop new things that, that because there is more uh, exchange of ideas and there is you know we might have something they might have something you know there's a, that that brings this together so that makes things move very faster and we can learn from them they can learn from us and uh, that's 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 changing a lot yeah so how many vaccines you have created um i see i'm i'm a you know clinical uh, it's not me it's, it's it's our entire team it's it's a, it's a it's a larger team of when you talk about r and d you know and uh, it starts from the uh, conceptualization of the vaccine till doing the uh, animal animal testing animal toxicology preclinical then bringing it to chemical so there are a lot of people involved in that uh, when it comes to clinical development of this vaccine you know i think in past 7 years uh, me and my team have worked close to around 6 uh, vaccines okay uh, and brought them to uh, marketing approval and also who pre qualification uh other than the uh, the co- the corbivax vaccine which was went into the covid we uh, we developed uh, we worked on development me and our team worked on development uh, uh, clinical development of pneumococcal uh, conjugate vaccine a uh, 14 valent which is the highest uh, valent vaccine present in india and the great thing about this vaccine is the entire vaccine was developed with the technology with indigenous technology starting from the basic concept to the product Uh, biologically and its scientists had invested a lot of time in that close to on 9 9 to 10 years for developing the vaccine this, this is one of the uh, biggest achievement for us uh, as a company and uh, uh, you know it's a great uh, opportunity for us to learn and uh, it being the highest valent vaccine right now with an available in india and which is very affordable and which is a very life saving vaccine for infants uh, for against all pneumococcal diseases Uh, it is a very great achievement you know i think uh, uh, the lot of people uh, would uh, work in uh, different different uh, phases of trial but me and my team was fortunate to be part of the entire development of these vaccines all the process till it congratulations thank you very much thank you the last question yeah. for you the pharmacy of the world yeah and we are moving towards that yeah. so people wants to get into it yeah. so what do you advise for these people who wants to get into yeah. clinical trial yeah. development yeah. kind of yeah see i think the the challenge uh, for any pharma student i was a student as you know uh, which i learned we are very theory based uh, education system academics we don't uh, know how to apply it and uh, uh, fortunately uh, uh, because of my training in europe in germany changed the entire way of how i think So whenever I come back, whenever I talk with the Indian students, I always tell them, you know, don't you know learn theory, but see how it is going to be applied. That is very important. It's very crucial. And most of the times we get confused. Why am I reading this? You know, we don't even know why am I doing this. But if you understand the basic thing behind it, I think it's not it's not fault of uh, the student. It's fault of the somewhere you know the academics itself is they not put. I, I I don't know. I didn't review current academics how things are. Right? I'm I'm also. Uh, going back to my days but i think now it has evolved a lot i think a lot of people are going and working doing their internships working trying to gather that experience because when we were studying the internships were you know it is a very you know big word you know it's not get used to get into the industry but they's not allow you to touch anything you have to just sit and watch and whatever it is but i think things have improved i think the academics have improved and my advice to people or students the upcoming people who want to pursue career either in pharma either in clinical development uh, either in research and development everything is to see that they they know how to translate theory to practical that's how they have to put it and it's a wide opportunity a lot of people run uh, behind uh, it jobs or whatever but this, i think the life sciences jobs are you know future that's what i see happen then certainly i think this is a very important message for every every uh, new generation yeah. thanks a lot thanks sir thank you